This is Marketing Jam, a show featuring the brightest minds in marketing. As we get going into our show, I want to talk about SEO quickly. This whole search engine optimization thing. People are frustrated by it, confused by it, and probably not really getting the straight goods about how it works. Back when we outsource our SEO, we're often confused when we get the reports back. It seemed like a dark art. They were rubbing some sort of oil on our websites and supposedly magic was happening. When we started using AREFs, it was a game changer. The reports we got, the clarity on site ranking for terms, and really the transparency and understanding between off-site and on-site SEO was really helpful. Today, for all of our clients, we provide HREFs reporting and use the tool to audit sites. It's the premier SEO tool and you can have the confidence you're getting the top quality tool that provides incredible support and resources to help you with your SEO for your brand or the clients you work with. Check out arefs.com today. Thanks everyone for joining us for another week of Marketing Jam. Uh, this is exciting as if you are a podcast listener, you probably already listen and subscribe to Everyone Hates Marketers. And we have Louis from Everyone Hates Marketers, which is very, very exciting. Uh, it is uh, early in the morning for me here in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, Louis, welcome coming at us from uh, Dublin, Ireland. Thank you for coming on the show. Bonjour, bonjour. It's a pleasure. Uh, thanks for doing what you're doing. And you've been doing it for more than, than I have. So I have a lot, a lot to learn from you. Let's do this. No. So, so speaking of podcasts, um, tell me how long you've been going for and, and tell me about why you started your show. Um, so everyone hates marketers been running for three years and a half, would you believe? And when I started it, I had no idea that would go uh, this far or that I would run it for that long. Um, but I think to explain why I started the show, I need to go back to a few years after a few years before, um, I was absolutely dreaming to get into a marketing role when I was mm -hmm. like 20 19 right mm -hmm. and it came from me reading this book uh, which is kind of the french version of persuasion by cialdini which is a, a book that all my guests mention a lot of them at least and it's not the translation of it but it's just a, another guy who a french dude who who wrote about similar topic anyway i read it uh, after spending uh, a weekend uh, in paris with my brother and since then i was just absolutely you know mesmerized by the topic and how to make people, you know, pay attention to you and, and how to promote your stuff. And I just had a few jobs here and there when I moved to Ireland for an internship. And I was really literally thinking about, you know, joining a marketing career. And I was jealous of everyone working closely, even with agencies in marketing. I mean, I was just like, you know, to the point where, yeah, getting jealous. Anyway, I, I managed to get into that. And pretty quickly, I realized how it wasn't as good and, and 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 great as I thought in my head and reading all of those books, realized pretty quickly that a lot of marketers were pretty shady when it came to reaching their targets. You know, they, they can talk the talk for sure, but walking the walk when it comes to, uh, shit, we need to actually reach 20,000 leads this month. What are we going to do? Let's buy an email list. Let's Let's buy a, a Twitter automation software. Let's, you know, you just completely disregard the the ethics. And it just felt very uncomfortable for years, but it wasn't to the point where, you know, this was my thing. It just took years and years and years of being, you know, annoyed at it mm -hmm. um, to the point where after a few years, yeah, I started to talk to people and realize others were feeling the same way. Um, and so I organized an event first that was nothing to do with uh, marketing. I had my agency, but I wanted to to talk about bootstrapping, right? Mm -hmm. So I organized two events in my local chamber of commerce. And a lot of people told me that they loved the way I interviewed people because I was just mm. doing a live kind of interview with someone else. Yeah. And then I started to do Skype interviews with other founders and marketers. And I started to talk about that topic. And then it became this podcast. So I had like 10 episodes in the backlog and I didn't know what to do with it. And mm. I started the podcast on the back of it. So that's the long story, but that's why I started it. Uh, but it wasn't an overnight success or it wasn't this light bulb moment that came yeah. to me. It just took literally almost 10 years in the making, you know? 
So at the time, what uh, hosting platform were you using? What was available to you? <laughs> uh, Leapsin. Well, was... Yes. Okay. Okay. Are you still Are you still there as well, or have you switched? Where, where are you no. hosting now? I'm hosting on Castos, uh, which is one of my friends' uh, software. Um, yeah. That used to do. I, I switched because I, I used to have a WordPress site and it was integrating nicely with it. Uh, but it was mostly to support him. Yeah, yeah. We we started on SoundCloud and then it distributed for us to iTunes. Right. Uh, and then we recently made the switch to Anchor.fm, which has been recently uh -huh. purchased by Spotify. And so that's kind of our distributor for us at the moment. Nice. Yeah. So what are your thoughts about you know almost every day now? I, literally, there is a new podcast starting and and. You know, you know, my friend's sister's starting one, my friend's grandma's starting one about every topic under the sun. What are your thoughts on this kind of trend of now podcasts are now becoming the thing to do? I can't wait to hear your, your friend's grandma's podcast. Mm -hmm. That must mm -hmm. be cool. Um, well, I, I think the main thing about this medium is that it's very it's a very personal thing. So people listen to it while they are running, while they're at the gym, while they're working their dog, while they're going for work, while they're cooking. And I think there's something about listening to someone else's voice. And what I've heard many times over is that people feel like they are part of the conversation, right? So they are part mm -hmm. of this. this it, it feels like you are with them. And, and so it cre creates this kind of close connection. As opposed to, I would say, a YouTube show where you just watch videos, you, you still have a distance. You don't feel like you are in the video with them, yeah. you know? So it's it's a pot, it's a medium that is that is growing because of that and because of the fact that a lot of people have access to, to those devices now. People are, don't have much time and it's easier to do to multitask listening to podcasts. So I understand why everyone is, uh, it seems like everyone is doing it. Although if you remove the bubble we are in, not many people listen to podcasts, nor do they create some. Um, so I would say, you know, if you feel like it, just go for it and, and ship and see what, what, what happens. Um, my, if I have to wear my marketing hat, what I would say is that, like anything, a podcast is, you know, if you just come up with it and launch something, yes, you can improve it. But everyone adds the clutter. You know, there's more and more noise mm -hmm. online. I'm not going to teach that to anyone. It's more and more difficult to to stand out, whether it's a product, a service, a podcast or whatnot. So, you know, if you just copy what everyone else is doing and launch yet another The Growth Hacking Podcast, or the Demon Gen podcast, then you're going to have very, very tough time to get any more than 10 listeners potentially, right? And I don't yeah. want to discourage you to do that, but I think you need to take a few steps before to think about how you're going to position that yeah. and how you're going to make sure that you radically stand out from the rest by design, you know? So yeah. there are a few steps you can take to actually do that. Uh, that's what I've done with Everyone Hates Marketers. It sounds like... Yes, it's been luck. I think timing is a good part of it and definitely luck. But I've also made a few choices on purpose to stand out from the, the marketing podcast and business podcast out there. And, and so besides blatantly the title, which definitely stands out, it caught my attention right away. I thought it was <laughs> awesome. Uh, what else have you done on the show that's unique? So I think it's a combination of a few things. So when I started, I made a bet with myself and I made a promise to myself. I decided for instead of launching an agency like I did a few years before where I completely failed and burned out after two years because I had no credibility and I just struggled to find any clients, I decided to do something and to give value uh, for people in the long run. So first I decided I'm going to do that for every week. I'm never yeah. going to stop. I'm going to focus on the process. That's not nice. new. I decided not to have any ads whatsoever. Nice. Never. Yeah. And that was just to to truly be just a, a connection with me and and, and 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 the listeners and to just build trust and knowing yeah. that that will be something that people will enjoy. And in fact, that's still something people mention sometimes. You know, I start the show straight away. There is no ad or is, there is nothing. Mm. Now, I don't I don't mean any disrespect to any other podcast to do that. I completely get why you're doing it. But the positioning of it, the, the package had to be a strong name, had to be no ads. Then I decided as well to go straight away into one particular specific topic at every episode. Instead of just talking about the guests and who they are and touch on many, many subjects, what mm -hmm. I decided to do is to pick one and go at it 100%. Mm -hmm. So every episode is 50 minutes of 
talking about a very specific topic and I would just grill you and grill you and grill you, nice. which, is the, which is the other thing. I don't put anyone on the pedestal and I do my hardest not to, even like yeah. when I talk to my hero, like Seth Godin, yeah. I really try to just forget about who he is and just yeah. have a normal conversation, right? So I would interrupt them. I would give them challenges. I wouldn't take any bullshit answers uh, as face value. Just how like like who I am, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the this intersection of having something that you that adds value, but also is in line with your strength, with your unique ability. And mm -hmm. so there's a few more details, but overall, this design, this thing, actually created this radical differentiation in the in the marketing podcast. And I've yet to find any any other podcast that does it the same way. It's amazing. For those who have yet to discover your podcast, what's the episode that they should start with? What's your what's maybe your favorite interview? The, the the interview I'm the proudest of is definitely with Seth Godin because yeah. I managed to forget about who he was and just really question him. Mm -hmm. And again, applying this radical differentiation mindset to the interview itself. I really yeah. worked hard on making sure how the, how am I supposed to start a podcast episode with him that he will remember that will yeah. add value. And so, yeah, I asked him the question, uh, if you had $1,000 um, and you couldn't use your name, your credibility how would you make 10 grand after six months or something like that um and yeah i'm very proud of this one so yeah if, if, if you if you've never listened to it do do listen to this one and thank you so much for for promoting it or talking about this no of course of course and, and tell me about your day job now what, what is your what does that yeah. look like um well it, it, i work for hotjar which is a a, um, a behavior analytics software and it helps you to see what people really do on your website so it's kind of a, a nice way to to make sense of the very kind of cold numbers from traditional web analytics like Google Analytics. So I have, uh, I have analytics on my site. So like, let's just look at Jelly site, for example, and it yep. tells me, you know, what cities they're from, how much time they spend on the site, which goals they achieve. Mm. What, what does Hotjar add to that? What's that kind of advanced filtering system or advanced kind well, of glasses? Does it tell you does Google Analytics tell you why people come to your site? Uh, no, they used back in the day, early Google Analytics days, they used to tell me all the things they searched to get to my site. But that, right. for some reason, that information yeah. is now. But let's say, out. let's say you don't search. Let's say they come from like direct or yeah, social yeah. media ads. Like, do you know why they're on your site? Uh, I can make guesses because of the goals that happen, but that's right. it. So guesses. I, there you guesses, go. Guesses. Yeah. So. It removes the guesswork because it enables you to answer those questions, so like the type of why are they doing what they're doing? Why are they not doing what they're doing? Yeah. Why do they not go to check out? Why are they, where are they struggling? You know, yeah. all of those questions that are more about what people actually do on your website. Yeah. What happens between what Google Analytics track and what, um, what is real life? So it enables you to really see with your own eyes what users actually do. So it's not a it's not meant to replace Google Analytics. It's meant to really give you to turn those cold hard data into a more colorful experience where you can add more depth. You can truly understand your users better and empathize with them instead of making guess work, guessing stuff. So as a user going to a site that has Hotjar on it, can I tell that Hotjar has been installed? As a user who goes on someone's website, yeah. it depends on the tool. So yeah, Hotjar as a as a as a suite of tools. Yeah. So some of them are behind the scenes, like heat maps with that heat maps, mm. which gives you a visual representation of where people click and move on, on your page. People don't know that. Uh, we also have uh, recordings that enables you to watch uh, how people behave on your site, removing any um, identifiable information about them that people don't know either. Uh, but we don't know who they are either, right? So. Uh, folks can opt out of this if they want to, but regardless, there's no way to know who they are. We mask any sensitive information. Um, and so um, and so those two things, for example, you wouldn't know. We also have feedbacks, uh, a feedback side of things. So uh, we have little polls that pop up on the survey or little widgets. And I've seen that. I've seen, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those pop up. So and those are visible. You guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Those are visible. But, but the other two aren't, and the other two... How do you see that data apply for marketers making decisions? Well, it's really about, you know, when you want to improve your website, yeah. 
you want to avoid guesswork as much as possible. You want to yeah. avoid looking at best practices and market trends yeah. and yeah. all of that. You want to be, be as close as possible to your users, right? Yeah. And if you want to be as close as possible to your users, you need to answer a few questions that traditional web analytics can't, can't answer mm -hmm. and that you can't just guess. So the way to see it is a kind of a three-step system. You want to know why people go on your website. You mm -hmm. want to know what stops some of them to convert and you want to know what made some of them convert. Yeah. Yeah. Simple, right? So why is it important, first of all, why do they come to your website? If you take a traditional e-commerce website, if you ask people on your homepage with a little poll, hey, yeah. quick one, um, what's the number one reason for your visit today? Hmm. Is it to buy something? Is it to research something? Yeah. Are you just shopping around, whatever? Yeah. You will get data that you've never had before from hmm. Google Analytics that will actually paint a picture that is much different from what you can imagine. Every time we run similar polls, we see something similar. Uh, most folks landing on your website are not at all in the mood to buy right now. So yeah. trying to convert and squeeze the conversion out of every single one of them is not yeah. the right way to go, right? Yeah. Another thing that is super, super powerful is to look back at folks who actually converted, mm. but nearly didn't, right? Yeah. So you look at people, you watch recordings of folks who converted, but nearly didn't, and you look at where they stumbled. You look at where they stopped. You look where they read, where they didn't read. You look at the page that they came back and forth uh, from. And the reason why it's so important to look at those folks is because you're not going to look at the experience of everyone because not everyone on your website is equal, right? Some mm -hmm. people would be just researching, would be students, would be people who have never buy from you. The one who did buy from you, they matter because you want more of them to convert. And so looking yeah. at their experience, you can pinpoint what they liked so you can improve that what they yeah. didn't, so you can fix it, right? Wow. And so only those two things, to be honest, is very rare to see anyone doing it, even in big companies. And you would get a competitive advantage by getting yeah. closer to users because others are just busy making guesses. That's wow. as simple as that. Hey, are you having trouble tracking inbound phone calls from your website or ads? CallRail gives you the call tracking you need to measure the success of your marketing efforts in real time. Discover how many calls you receive from your Google ads, organic searches, social media efforts, and so much more. But that's not the only reason we use CallRail. CallRail seamlessly integrates your call and conversion data with over 700 marketing tools and platforms, including Google Analytics and Salesforce to fuel deeper insights automatically. Start your free trial today with CallRail. So for the um, heat mapping, and uh, kind of the, the two kind of behind the scenes tools. What are you paying for that? What's a, what's a user paying for a website, like one website? Um, so we have a free version, free forever, yeah. freemium. So that gives you three heat maps, uh, 100 recordings, uh, wow. three polls. So to be honest, you can get a lot of it with just a free yeah. version. I, I before I joined Hoja, I was a power user and I used to uh, I used it on my with my agency. Nice. Uh, and then we have the business plan, which is. Um, um, $99, uh, 99 euro a month, depending. Mm -hmm. And that gives you unlimited uh, everything. Uh, you have a cap on traffic, and then the more traffic you have, the more the more you pay. But for any mid-size e-commerce companies, uh, or pro uh, companies selling online, it's the business version that $99 is usually the one that uh, that is the most popular. But you can get a lot with just the freemium. I mean, you even get, thinking like... Like even to, not just e-commerce, but professional services. Like, what are people doing? What sites are they going to? Where are they putting their mouse? Yep. Like, what pages are they most interested in? I get some of that data, but this sounds like it's like uh, a leveled up version. It's like you took the mushroom in Mario, you got the leveled up version of analytics. Y yes, although we are not meant to replace them. I mean, no, it's, what, it's the, just an upgraded. Job that, yeah, exactly. You need both. Like, to, let's let's be honest. In today's world, where you need to be like whoever is closest to the the customer wins, you need mm -hmm. both. You can't yeah. just make guesses with Google Analytics, and you can't just use Hotjar on its own because else you're missing the bigger picture of of where people are coming from and, and which channel and and which country. It's it's Hotjar is not meant to be used on its own as well. That's why we always encourage people to use both at the same time. Wow. So the position you're in, both with the podcast and with Hotjar, what are some of the maybe brands you're following or trends that you're seeing that you're really actually encouraged by and, and excited about? Um, I have a different perspective on this. No, I please. think 
marketers are way, way too obsessed about mm. the shiny new stuff, the mm -hmm. shiny new software, the shiny new method, trend, yeah. tool. And they should focus more on timeless principles, fundamentals of the world mm. and the way people think that will never mm. change. Um, I see so many marketers and I talk to so many of them who are completely overwhelmed by what's mm. going on. They feel like information is passing them by. They can't make sense of it. They can't follow all the new upgrades and features and the new trends. They get lost, frankly, because they don't have foundations to rely on. You know, they, they think everything is changing so fast they can't keep up. To be honest, when people say that, like, oh, you can't keep, like, things are moving too fast now. And <sighs> I just completely disagree with it. Fundamentals are fundamentals. They're never going to change. The way people behave and why they do, we do things is, is not going to change. The way we remember things is not going to change. It's not, you know, uh, we are the product of, of million, if not billion of years of evolution. Uh, and it's not because a new iPhone version and a new uh, social media channel is is, uh, is is coming to the market that it's going to mm -hmm. change that. So I would really encourage people to, instead of focusing on those trends, which are important, you do mm -hmm. want to know what's up at a kind of macro level. Yeah. But first, first, first to have those foundations right. The first book I would recommend is Persuasion by, by Cialdini. But mm -hmm. any behavior, a behavioral science book that teaches you the fundamental of why people do things. Yeah is absolutely a critical for any marketers. Hmm. I, uh, I'm a huge fan of Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. It's a good kind of mm -hmm. like, uh, gives a good marketer a basic understanding. And it's not too complicated, but it gives some good research and some good statistics on kind of how trends happen. Yeah, uh, there's a, I think there's Decoded as well, The Secret Lives of the Brain. Yeah. Um, the Paradox of Choice is pretty good as well on, on, on how people make decisions. It's just, there's a lot there. Uh, and obviously you can't read them all, but you'll see a lot of patterns emerging. Yeah. And it's interesting to understand why then, you know, when, when you understand the deeper why, you can really start from this foundation and then come up with new ideas, mm. come up with new projects without focusing too much on what other people are doing. And this is the beauty of it. This is why for Hotjar in a very specific website world, it enables you to go back to fundamentals. Let's think back of the user. Why mm. do they take those decisions? Why do, what do they want to do? And then you take these, those foundations and then you can come up with changes to your website based on those fundamentals instead of looking at what the competitor is doing for no reason, but because someone else is doing that, you know. Um, that's called uh, innovation by augmentation or, uh, you know, it's just doing it slightly faster, slightly better, slightly cheaper. It just doesn't add anything to the, to the world and people just expect yeah. Once it's a bit cheaper or faster, that that's the new normal for them. So you, yeah. you're never going to radically stand out by doing this. Wow. So you mentioned some books, which is awesome. So thank you for that. Um, do you go? You follow any podcasts or books or e-newsletters? Other ones that you said, man, you got to pick this up and add it to your library. I'm or do you just picky. read the past? Yeah. Or do you just say read the past, <laughs> forget about the future and now? So I, I'm immensely lucky to be able to talk to folks who are much smarter than me on a weekly basis through yes. the podcast. So I learned a lot from those people and still do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's kind of a garbage, garbage in, garbage out type of philosophy. I'm being very careful what I'm reading and what I'm listening mm. to. Um, and I've really realized that what matters the most is to create stuff, to ship stuff, mm. to see how people behave, get feedback mm. and move on. And so I follow very, very few people. I follow what Seth Godin publishes every day. Yes. Uh, I follow Andre Chaperon, uh, who's a copywriter, who sells a few courses, very, very smart guy. Mm. Um, I don't listen to podcasts on marketing or business at all. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I honestly can't fucking deal with them most of the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I listen, listen to one. To I, will admit, I, I do listen to one marketing one. It's by CBC, uh, Terry O'Reilly, if you get a chance, because I, I, I find it fascinating because he does talk about the history of marketing. Yeah. It's called Under the Influence. If you get a chance, it's, nice. it's, it's good. It's old school and it's well produced and it's story driven and it's beautiful, beautiful one. So, so you mean to say that you're not listening to mine anymore? Is that it? Is that it? I'm saying it's, it's one that I'm like, it's beautiful. It's the most beautiful one out there. That's not like as like, yours is intense. Yours is like drinking from this fire hose and it's like you're going there and you're like, you're getting your lips whipped with the water. Whereas Terry O'Reilly's Under the Influence is like, this is a nice like, oh, this is nice. Like it's almost like 
a murder mystery history one that you love listening on the weekend. It's it's a nice you can do some dishes with it. Yours is like you're going and you're like, man, I gotta take a bunch of notes, and you feel like you're obliged to learn too much stuff. Nice. I never heard that before, but yeah, that's that's kind of my personality. I'm I'm super intense. I don't know yeah. how my wife does it, and I guess the podcast is that is my is the image of that. But another, just to go back to resources, the true crime podcast in general uh, yeah. and books. I just love that shit because again, it goes back to psychology. It fascinated oh, yeah. me to to know why people do things, crazy things. Uh, yeah. it's just fascinating. Were you a big um, Tiger King fan? Did you follow, watch that? Follow the whole thing? Um, yes. Nice. <laughs> I somehow, during COVID and through all this, I never did end up watching Tiger King. I got more into the Great British Bake Off. This, uh, oh my God. I, I, I am on season seven now. I'm t- I got season eight still left in, in my CBC Gem app, so I'm about to do season eight, but I've kind of been slowly enjoying it with my family. T- Tiger King is like the, you, you think it's actors? It's just, it's absolutely unfucking real. Like it's really unreal. I just, just can't believe it's true. I just still can't believe it's true. <laughs> oh man! And so being in this New York, being in Dublin, Ireland, um, do you notice that marketers are different around the world, especially with your interviewing? Like whether it's America or Canada or Australia, do you notice it's a different kind of angle or kind of kind of understanding how marketing works? Uh, no, honestly, no. I. I don't know why necessarily, probably because of the way I pick the guests and the fact that the type of question I ask, I think it always, always goes back to the, to the truth. I think Americans maybe in general tend to be a bit less, it's, um, maybe it's a bit more difficult to get into the, the nitty gritty, mm-hmm. but once they are, once they are in there, they, they, they will. Um, I mean, I would have to force it out and, and really overly think about it. I've never really thought about it this way. Um, regardless of the nationality, it's always fun to talk to people and quiz them, you know? That's amazing. That's amazing. So for yourself, uh, iPhone or are you an Android guy? Uh, iPhone for, for a lot of years now. I think the main thing is the, it just does what you expect to do and they are pretty big in security and privacy, which I think is, is the reason why I keep using them, you know? Yeah. And apps that you can't live without your favorite go-tos every day? Um, the G map, uh, I use one that's called Fitbod, which nice. is like workouts. Yeah. I, I, when I burned out a few years uh, through my agency, I, I didn't do any sports. I didn't take care of my mental well being, mm. And that's something I would encourage everyone to take care of, like take care of your mm. head and doing sport is fucking amazing for that. Uh, and another one, let me just think another one is Reddit. I'm on Reddit way too much, man. Nice. way too much. <laughs> Uh, do you use your real name or will you share your, your fictitious name? <laughs> no, 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 no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> and do you, do you go there for education or for personal or is it a bit of both? Fun as well. I love, yeah. I mean, any memes on anything makes yeah. me laugh. I just fucking love it. Um, yeah. I, I do follow a few true crime communities. They share yeah. good, good documentaries. And then I like to look, to follow, I have a, a, a group of subreddit that I follow on the marketing stuff. Yeah. I like to see the question people ask and yeah. when they re- ask for podcast recommendation, I always, uh, I always write mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's who to look for, I guess. Um, the other way, if you get a chance, there's a guy named Mark Kunis, Tom Fishburne. He puts out some great cartoons once a week. He does kind of like a, a yes. poke and a jab at, at marketing in general. And I, I really like his stuff. I'm trying to get uh, to get him on the podcast, actually. Oh, that would be great. But Louis, honestly, this has been awesome. I, I am a fan. Uh, it's nice to hear you and, and to meet you in person as much as we can, you know, virtually here. Um, thank you for coming on the show. And uh, I look forward to more episodes as they come out. And, and they've been awesome. So appreciate it. You're very welcome and beautiful shirt. It's a it's a shame listeners can't see your shirt. Oh, they can actually through YouTube yeah, and stuff. It, it's both so, ends. So yeah, yeah. We 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 are wondering if there's a chance that more people will come from listening to viewing. Because last time we had the show, we had a guest on from later, and he we talked about the art in his background. So we described it, but maybe some people will venture over to see the yeah. art. But we you never so know. You, 
you need to go and check the YouTube video to see Darren's shirt. Absolutely. There we go. There we go. It's a mystery. We won't tell you. We're not going to describe it even this time for you. We're just going to have you come and see it. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, thanks everyone for joining us this week on Marketing Jam. We'll see you next week on The Jam. Thank you.